How you doing, Steve? So um, <clears throat> Dallas, they get out to a 9 nothing start. Then in between the second and third quarter, they score 19 in a row. And then in the fourth quarter, they had a 13 to 2 run. Feels like a game, if this game was like six weeks ago, you might not have pulled it out. But through the ebbs and flows of the game, you guys still hung on to win. Where do you see kind of the growth over, I guess, those last six Just the so? level of competition was fantastic. You know, we, we stuck with it through all those uh, bad spells that you talked about. Um, but, you know, it was our defense that, that, uh, that got us a win. I mean, holding those guys to 100 points is uh, pretty difficult. I thought Wiggs was brilliant. You know, he just um, – he put in so much effort just trying to make Luca work, and, um, and Luca was amazing as he always is. But um, you know that effort really set a tone, and I liked the uh, the stretch at the end of the third. I thought Chris uh, Paul came in and and really changed the game for us um, with that flurry at the end of the third, and that gave us the lead going into the fourth, and and uh, that was an important stretch. Steve, more on, on Wiggins. Did you sense that from the beginning, he, that there was energy there, that there was force there? And do you think he kind of his offense kind of fed off his defense on, on Doncic? Yeah, I mean, Wiggs has been playing really well, uh, you know, really um, good two-way basketball now for a while. He had an uh, off night in San Antonio the other night, but um, overall, um, you know, he's uh, he's been aggressive offensively. He's getting downhill. Uh, and he's defending at a high level. I just think he's in a really good rhythm. He's in um, feeling good, you know, physically and um, playing at uh, playing at a high level. He was uh, definitely, you know, connecting the game tonight. You know, in terms of um, the defense um, on Doncic and just overall energy, leading to some some really good offensive possessions as well. It's been kind of like all defense for you guys during this five-game win streak. How how believable is this stretch, and what about it? You know, makes you feel like it's sustainable. Well, um, you know, this team obviously is a, is playing at a, a really high level. They were probably the hottest team in the league coming into tonight. They they made a really difficult trip, by the way, and obviously with the schedule shift. Um, <clears throat> You know they had to, they were in Sacramento for about four days and then f flew to Houston and turned right around and of course now we're about to do the same thing but for them it was a, it was a pretty rough rough trip man I appreciate um, not that we had any choice but uh, the fact that you know everybody you know shifted the schedule around to make this work um, you know that's that that's meaningful but um, I just think that um, you know. That's a great team, regardless of fatigue and the flight and all that. They're still really hard to guard, and um, we held them to 100 points. So uh, to me, that that's a good sign that what we did on the road was was not flukish. Um, staying on the defensive end, what did you think of Draymond's defense tonight, specifically that that block on on Gafford, and what did that do for you guys down the stretch? Yeah, that was that was probably the key defensive play of the game. Um, it was just a massive play. I thought he was going to go up to try to foul him, and he just had the uh, the right angle for the block, and um, that was a huge play. And uh, Draymond was uh, was was brilliant defensively as he has been, you know, for for a while now, and that's uh, he's one of the reasons we've been able to kind of turn the season around. Um, you talked about Chris Paul's flurry in the third to bring you guys up um, in the fourth. Can you talk about what he's done throughout the season in terms of leadership and his skills? Yeah, Chris is amazing. I mean, for him, you know, he, he never came off the bench once in his entire career until this year. So he set a, a, a tone with our team of unselfishness and, and commitment to the group. And, you know, he started some games uh, early and then came off the bench uh, again. And, you know, he's sort of – his role has shifted a little bit. But every single day he's in there working. Um, he's, uh, he's such a great mentor for the younger guys. And um, – He's, he's the guy who kind of calms things down when he gets on the floor. And, and uh, tonight we needed that especially because we were pretty wild offensively. Uh, it, it was not a great effort for us on the offensive end. But, you know, Chris's uh, play was, was really good and it helped us um, kind of settle things down. Beyond Chris, um, how much did the bench sort of change things? I mean, Pajemski is plus 17 yeah. and 
Peyton seemed like he had a big impact. There was a stretch there, third quarter, where really the bench played better than the starters did. Yeah, mm-hmm. Moses had a great game. Moses, uh, exactly. You know, BP, um, I thought Loon played important minutes for us. So um, it did feel like the, the, the bench group kind of sh- changed the game for us tonight. Steve, you guys have leaned on Steph and Clay for your offensive punch for so long. Over the course, this, uh, the course of this year, you can see that that's changed, obviously. And how important is it that you know other guys step in with double-digit scoring game, like Moses off the bench, like Wicks tonight? I mean, how important is that formula for you guys to try and make a run in the postseason? Yeah, we need that. Um, you know, and and this season has been. Uh, I think uh, a, a, about that transition, you know, um, the younger guys playing more and producing more and, you know, the older guys, um, you know, handing over some of the uh, responsibilities. And, and um, I think we've found a pretty good mix, you know. Um, it's, uh, we're, we're, we're finding a groove at the right time. A lot of guys are playing well. And um, we need everybody because um, every night feels a little different with this team. Steve, what was what happened with the double timeout there? Was that just you wanted extra time, or uh, no? Because we inbounded the ball and took the um, and trouble. didn't take the timeout before we inbounded. We used the second one to advance the ball. So I didn't want to get a uh, turnover in the backcourt underneath our own basket or an eight-second violation because uh, two seconds had already come off the, the floor uh, off the clock. And so, in order to advance it, you have to take another timeout. And I think I've asked you this before some other games, but almost a playoff field. Do you want your players to feel like this is like a mini playoff? Like you gotta, you yeah. Gotta win? I mean, these games are good for us because um, you know we're we're right on the edge, and um, we have to win almost every game, and it forces us to be sharp. Part of Chris Paul's big night you're talking about was he just hit, was hitting his jumper. Um, how much? How useful can that be, and how much more maybe do you want him to, to at times look for that mid range that that he made a career? Out? He's he's had a, a great shooting season. Yeah, after the you know the first month or so, he didn't shoot the ball very well, but uh, over over the last few months, he's really shot the ball well. Um, we need the scoring. You know, he comes in and he generates shots for others, but also for himself. And um, it's really been a, a great uh, dynamic to add to our team. You know, it's always been an issue when Steph comes off the floor over the last decade. But Chris, to me, gives us probably the best uh, ability um, over the last decade with that second group just to come in and, and, and take over a game. And um, he's done that numerous times this year. Steve, you've been pretty open about checking the standings every day. Um, I mean, how in that, con- in that context, how crucial is tonight, you know, Houston loses, so it pushes you up three on them, and you're still only one back of the Lakers in the loss column. So what, how does that matter to you? Or what is yeah, it? That, that's meaningful, and we've got a tough trip now to Houston and Dallas, so um, it's it's helpful, but you just got to keep going. Now, as a person who's coached a dynamic backcourt with Steph and Clay, how do you assess the backcourt of Luka and Kyrie, especially in a game like tonight? Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. <laughs> No, those guys are amazing. They, they're both playing at a really high level, and um, that's why Dallas is uh, where they are right now. They're, they're having a great season. Cool. Thank you. Chris, you came to this team knowing that you're going to be playing with some veterans, but how important have the other guys been for this team, whether it's Wiggs or BP or Trace, just the younger guys, how important have they been for you guys as you guys make this run? Uh, really important. I mean, everybody with the season that we didn't have with all the injuries and, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's really been by committee every night. That's five straight, like, you know, pretty good overall defensive games from you guys. What, what are you seeing on that end just overall that, that has kind of changed what you guys have been doing? Um, probably a little bit more aware um, and understanding, like, our coverages and trying to communicate early. Uh, it's funny, all season we sort of just – we didn't know where to be. Just sometimes God's not there. And I think uh, we're starting to understand that, um, you know, defense is what we got to be able to hang our hat on. You know, the offense, we got some amazing shooters and scorers or whatnot, but if we defend, it opens everything else up. 
Steve has been pretty upfront that he's been checking his standings pretty much every day down this stretch. Do you do the same, or are you more, we got to worry about what we're doing and just make sure that we're playing the best basketball? I just try to, once upon a time, probably, you know, but now I just try to worry about what we're doing. It's the only thing you can control. You ain't going to, ain't nothing going to happen in the standings <laughs> unless you win. You know, only bad things going to happen when you lose. You talked about the younger players. How much of a uh, rapport do you feel on the court with with BP and Moody? And it seemed like second, you know, late third quarter, you guys really kind of flipped the game, and and it wasn't one guy taking over. It was all of you playing together really well. Yeah, I think um, that's when we had our best when we sharing the ball and moving it. But it still goes back to our defense. When we're not taking the ball out the net, we can play at a better pace and just. Trying to read guys. We play so many different lineups on a given night. You're not sure what group you're going to be playing with. So you just sort of you figure it out. But one thing, like I said, got to be a constant is the defense. After uh, Chris, after years of uh, bumping heads with Draymond as an opponent, as an opponent, how is it different being on the other side and seeing the other side of him? It's easy. It's easy because uh, he's a cerebral player like myself. And uh, Dre thinks the game defensively, like me too. You know, he's a great passer and all this stuff, but he does all the little things, setting screens. And this game, man, it's actually a simple game if you pay attention to it. You know, it ain't always about the speed and the thrust. It's about angles. It's about the reads. And he uh, one of the best I've seen my whole career. And. I appreciate playing with somebody that sees the game like I do. Do you ever worry about uh, you know his temper getting away and, and causing him to miss miss games or anything like that? You know. Nope. Nope. Not at all. And um, I don't know if you've seen it, but shout out to Dre's podcast. But <laughs> we talked about it on there, and that I I play with the same passion as, that he does. You know. So when he talks or yells or anything like that. I'm listening to what he's saying and not how he's saying it. And I think that's what a lot of people don't do in all types of situations. So I can appreciate his passion, you know. If he wasn't like that, that means he wouldn't care. You know what I mean? So I know how bad he wants to win and I can have those conversations with him. Chris, how, much do you live, how much do you live for these high level games? Um, obviously you've been around, you played a, a thousand games or whatever, but you know, when you're on the court and you're facing Kyrie and Luke and those guys, how much do you live for those moments playing against guys that you know are, are stars in this league? That's why you do it. I wouldn't be out here 19 years if, you know, if I didn't love to do this and, and think that I was more than capable of doing it. You know, I go spend time with my kids and my family. You know what I mean? It's a lot of years of this, and um, uh, that's that's why you do it. You're in these situations over and over again, and, and you keep trying to, um, you know, get to the top you were aggressive with the jumper tonight when do you decide on this team when it is time to to, to really look for for your own jumper? I don't know I just just sort of play <laughs> just seriously you just figure it out on what night it's gonna be this or that you just I'm literally out there just trying to help figure out how we can win what what told you tonight was it just their defensive coverage or person yeah um, defensive coverage, two for one um, situations. You talk about understanding Draymond's passion. There was that timeout early in the game when he, I guess he wanted Trace or, or Pajemski a couple passes where he, he didn't get them on and he definitely looked upset. I saw you kind of talk to him, not asking what you said, but is that a moment that you can understand maybe better? You can, you can feel what, what he's feeling and you can talk to him a little bit? No question. No question. And I tell you, I mean, you pay attention long enough and there's guys where plays happen and don't nobody say nothing, you know, and then they just go home and, you know what I mean? Show me, I tell you, somebody, show me somebody that's okay with losing and that I'll show you a loser. <laughs> you know what I mean? So Dre's passion is why they didn't want championships and stuff around here. So um, I, I respect it. I ain't like it when I was on the other team, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, um, I definitely, it obviously gotten to know him a lot better, and I appreciate him. And that passion is why those blocks and those plays happen at the end of the game. So, you know, if you are hate you him. trying to calm him down at all, or you're just talking to him in a moment like that? 
It's both, but I understand it because people have had to do the same to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's like his, his will to win, it's a passion, man. So obviously it's always people who's going to say, oh, he needs to do this, he needs to do that. But I, I appreciate him for, for who he is. You haven't played a ton of minutes this season, obviously coming off the bench. Uh, you miss some games. Do you feel like there's a gear in you late in the season? Do you, do you feel like your legs are there and, and strong? Uh, I, will, I will hope so. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel it? Like feel like, what? Like you, you, you got strong legs. Like this is this is like <laughs> not a late season Chris Paul. This is a this is a. And I don't know. I'm here. I'm I'm here, ready to play when 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 it's called on. You know what I mean? I I'm. Yeah, I don't, I don't think I read. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, yeah. <laughs> Just having such a big impact tonight in only 20 minutes, um, how different is it, you know, playing in shorter bursts, knowing you might not have as much time as you, you once did to kind of feel the game and find a rhythm? Just try to um, be effective in the time that I'm out there. That's that's your mindset. Mavericks came in hot, winners of seven straight. But how did the defense you guys put on the floor tonight put the clamps on them? Um, just being in our shell, um, trusting the next guy, trusting rotations. Obviously, Luca's a great player, but they have a lot of other pieces too. So I'm keying on them as well and um, just helping each other. Tell me a little bit about Luca and the job Andrew Wiggins did on him tonight, and then Wiggins also being the leading scorer on the offensive end. Uh, Wiggs did a phenomenal job on him. I mean, he had 30 points, but on 22 shots. And so um, that's what we were trying to do, just take him out of his rhythm a little bit. And then on the offensive end of the floor, I know I've said this before, but when he's playing at that level, we're a really tough team to beat. Really similar stats tonight, small margins of victory in each of these you know, box score columns. One of the ways that you guys won this game was rebounding. You had 10 of those rebounds. What are you thinking about out there being aggressive? Um, just trying to limit their or limit, limit, limit their chances and um, try to steal possessions for us as well because I know um, kick, out, kick out three off of the offensive board is one of the highest percentage of made three. So. What does five consecutive wins for the Warriors at this time in the season say about the team? Um, it's great. Uh, four in a row on the road, but coming back home, I know we've been struggling a little bit, so coming back, being able to get one against a really good team um, gives us a lot of confidence. Thank you very much. Thank you. He's standing by with the great KB, Kareth Burke. The Mavericks average 119 points per game. You guys held them to 100. Just one of those ways the defense showed up tonight. What was the best part of the defensive clamps? Yeah, thank you. Andrew Wiggins, um, his intensity that he bring to start against Luka um, really set the tone for us defensively. And then we kind of all chipped in in our own ways. And then Draymond with the huge block down the stretch. Um, so just a collective effort. And, you know, I think we have a pretty good record when we held, hold teams under 100 points. And we did a few times on the road trip. And, um, you know, it's good to keep that going at home, especially because we haven't really, you know, put a full game together at home. Wiggins guarding Luka, that expends a lot of energy. Then he came through on offense to be your leading scorer tonight. What do you think of this game from Wiggins? Yeah, I mean, he's been doing this for a decade now. Um, you know, he's a pro. He comes in, gets his work in, and, um, you know, he loves taking that challenge every night of guarding the best player. And to be able to be a two-way guy like he is um, is pretty important. You were a plus 17 in this game, part of a huge bench effort as well, outscoring the Mavs 39 to 13. What are you guys thinking as a bench unit to contribute to these wins? Yeah, just to help the starters out. Um, you know, when me and Chris come in there, and then Moses tonight chipping in, Gary, Loon, um, you know, just contributing in any way possible and making it as easy as we can for when that starting group has to come in because they're fighting and battling their best players. Um, every time they're out there. So anyway, we can make it as easy as possible, um, whether it's rebounding, passing the ball, not turning it over, getting good shots. I think that's what leads to the, you know, the good plus minus. And just because we never know what people have going on in their personal life, you lost a coach who was very dear to you uh, that happened on the road trip. What did that coach mean to you? Yeah, he meant everything. Um, he kind of was the reason I really started taking basketball serious. He kind of saw the potential I could have before I saw it and he pushed me and you know some days I didn't like it but it was all out of you know good heart and he knew what I could do and um, to lose him on the 21st was you know obviously sad um, but now it's just about how can I you know live in his legacy and kind of do the things that I know he'd want me to do um, if he was here.
what was his name and, and what year was he? Yeah, uh, D Dwayne Malachnik. Um, I met him my, my ninth grade year. He recruited me um, to our St. John's High School. I played for him my sophomore, junior, and senior year of high school. Um, he passed away. He was 61. So, um, your perspective of, you know, never taking anything for granted and, you know, cherish the moment you have with people you love. Thank you very much. Of course. Oh. Andrew, just how important has it been for the past few games to, for you to be aggressive, especially without Jonathan? Um, <clears throat> I mean, it's been, it's been important, you know, just trying to, you know, help and do my part, you know, especially, you know, JK is out the lineup and, you know, he's a huge part of what we do, you know, so everybody just has to pick it up because JK is a force when he's in the game. How much, how much better do you feel like your rhythm offensively is now compared to where it was earlier in the year? Um, I feel a lot better than before, for sure. I feel like I'm in a pretty good rhythm offensively and, you know, defensively. You know, I feel like our team's playing great basketball right now, so. Beyond, uh, beyond JK not being there, how much more of a responsibility do you feel when Steph's obviously not shooting the way he normally does? I mean, you obviously filled that void tonight. Um, I mean, yeah, you know, every every game is is different, um, and you know, Steph has a lot, you know, on his shoulders. You know, what he does is you know amazing every, every night. Um, but that's the thing about Steph. Even when you know if he's not scoring the ball a lot or you know shots aren't going in, you know, he's still the most dangerous person on the court and attracts so much attention. You know, and. He can miss 100 shots. You still got to play him and put two people on him because he's that good and that dangerous. Um, so I just do my part and do what I can do. I was just watching the replay of the Draymond block on Gafford. What was your vantage point on that play? Man, Draymond's special, uh, very special. Uh, defensive mastermind. You know, he's he's everywhere. You know, he's everywhere. He, he's got everyone's back. You know, that's, that's what gives everyone else, you know, um, the advantage to just play, play, play freely, you know, defensively, because you know you have German behind you. He's, you know, he's gonna pick up any slack or anything that happens. From a distance, it felt like tonight's game had more intensity than normal, which would make sense given what's at stake. Mm -hmm. Does it feel like that to you? These, you know, the last week or so, and now going forward in the playoff push. Oh, uh, for sure, for sure. You know, we're, we're fighting for our lives right now. You know, we're fighting to stay alive. Um, to put ourselves in position to, you know, have the chance to do something special. You, you know, when you see the Mavericks, you're going to see Luca. You know that, right? <laughs> so, um, how important is it, though, as part of your plan to try and make him work on the other end? Because obviously, that's when you can maybe take advantage. Yeah, I mean, you know, Luca's Luca. You know, I thought I played pretty good defense, still had 30 point triple double, <laughs> you know? But, you know, my job is to make it hard on him. Um, and do what I can and kind of disrupt them a little bit on the other side, just attack and, and be aggressive. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, for, for many years, the Warriors, you know, you, you were going to get 50 or 60 from Steph and Clay combined almost every night. You don't see it as much now because, they, you know, they're getting on a little bit and you guys are being more of a part of the offense. How important is that formula that, you know, guys like you and, and VP and Moses and JK when he's available, that you guys are able, you know, to kind of give those guys a little bit, little bit of a hand? Um, I mean, yeah, it's important. You know, every game is different, you know, especially this time of the year. You know, it's been a long year. <clears throat> um, so, you know, the young, younger guys definitely – had to step up and, you know, even, you know, Moses, JK, BP, uh, uh, Trace, they've done a, a hell of a job, you know. You. I've done all right. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the past week or so is probably the best, like, stretch of defense this team has played. What mm -hmm. has been different uh, that you guys are doing in the past four or five games? Um, we're just locking in, you know, that's – that's what it comes down to, you know, guarding your man and having each other's back. You know, and we're trusting each other defensively and having a, a tight shell. Cool. Thank you. We'll have a very long 
Jason. I thought uh, when you guys got down by 13 in the second quarter, you might be running out of gas, but then you guys, it's like a 23 to 2 run. Where do you think you guys summoned that from? Yeah, I think it's in the past that could have easily been a, a uh, bigger lead at halftime where it could have been 20 down at half, but it's tied. And we just felt we didn't play well. Um, we had some great looks on the offensive end. Um, but I think it's just the character of the group when you look at um, this, this road trip. Uh, we've been down. We haven't played well. Um, we've stayed together. And we've understand that there's two halves to the game. And um, again, we get off to a good start in the third. They make a run. Um, but again, that fourth quarter, our defense kept us in the game. We got some great looks. Um, that you know, when you look at Luca and Kai and, and PJ, we, we had some great looks that just didn't go down, and that just happens sometimes. But um, the road trip, um, you were on it, is <laughs> long. But we're not going to use that as an excuse. We're, we we truly believe we put ourselves in a position to win tonight's game, but we came up short. How much did you guys uh, miss lively tonight? I noticed you didn't get a lot out of your backup center position. Yeah, yeah anytime uh, we missed Josh too. I mean, we miss uh, D Live and Josh, uh, but uh, you suit up the guys that can play, and, and DP gave us uh, eight good minutes um, out there. Um, looking at Maxi and Gaff, we just couldn't take advantage of when they were small to get the you know offensive rebounds, um, and that's something in the past that we've done. But um, give them credit; they they played hard. Uh, they they found a way to win. Um, there's a lot of good things that we can take from this game. Um, being able to execute late, um, being able to you know execute late game plays offensively and defensively. I thought Maxi had a heck of a block there, um, you know after the trap, and then we get an opportunity to score. So there's a lot of good things. Um, we're sitting in a good seat. Um, now we got to prepare um, for Atlanta. Hey, Coach, kind of building off what you just said, uh, you weren't able to finish the job tonight, but how confident are you in this group uh, in finishing games, particularly with Luca and Kyrie out there? Yeah, we got, you know, our, our two leaders got great looks. If not, they were making plays for other guys. Uh, and PJ makes a big three there um, at the top of the floor. Um, just the trust that they have with one another uh, on both ends, offensively and defensively. So there's a lot of, um, you know, positive things. Um, there's a lot of trust and chemistry is at a highlight right now. So I, I truly believe in this group. Um, we're going to learn from this and get better. Jason, welcome home, How first you doing? of all. Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Given the play-in and the cluster of teams that are 7, 8, 9, 10, what's the mindset, let's say, that you try to instill in your players coming down the stretch? Because one win here or there can dramatically affect it what your, your playoff situation is going to be? Yeah, I think it's that's a great question. It's, you know, taking one one game at a time. We can only play what's in front of us. And, and tonight was the Warriors and on the road. Um, we put ourselves in a position to win. Um, they made plays. We came up short. And it's just something that we can learn from. But again, our defense is, is at a very high level. We've been talking about that of late. If we're not making shots, we got to be able to get stops. And, and tonight we did that. Uh, we just couldn't capitalize on the other end. And, but it's just taking one game at a time and, and, and learning from wins and losses and then going forward with the next game, and that's Atlanta. That's the only one we're focused on. We can't scoreboard watch. We can only take care of what's in front of us, and we control what, where we'll be seated at the end of uh, seven more games. Oh, what challenges did you see uh, facing Draymond Green in short rolls, especially in the fourth quarter? Yeah, you know, that's uh, something that he has uh, perfected, um, being able to play make out of the short roll. Um, and so uh, being able to try to, you know, he, he found a way to score and find and find guys. And so whenever you put two on the ball with Steph, uh, you, when Draymond's involved in that pick and roll, um, we just have to be a little bit better. Um, we play those guys here shortly uh, at the end of this week. And so um, we can see what we can do better to, to make it tougher on him. But... He's seen every defense. Steph has seen every defense. And so we just got to try to keep those guys off balance. Thanks.